Okay, so in this video we're going to use the uh, Riemann sums to find the uh, definite integral of this function. So for this I'm going to use the formulas uh, from here. I'm just going to, I'm going to use the sum of i cubes. So you see that I have a term that has x cubes. And I'm going to need the sum of, since I have the terms of x's, this is going to become, if, you, if you're realizing, I'm going to be using this one as well. Um, this formula from up here, sorry. So the, my goal, kind of, when you write these down, is to separate the sums, to identify them like those, and then manipulate them. Okay, that's that's kind of like once you get to isolate the, the the sums to look like these formulas, to apply these formulas, then you just apply them, and then you have something in terms of n instead of i's. So okay, so first I need to find my delta x, and my delta x is going to be always b minus a over n. Um, so in this case, it's just 3 over n, 3 minus 0, so 3 over n, correct? And then I'm going to find, so my xi's, remember it's always the left point plus i times my delta x. My a is 0 in this case, so it's really just i times delta x, so it's really just 3i over n. That's my xi, okay? So this um, sum, sorry, this, this integral is really um, a limit when n goes to infinity of a sum from i equals 1 up to n of f of xi uh, delta x. So my xi could be my right endpoints, uh, so we, that's what the problem says up here. In the general definition, it could be any sample point in the ith interval. So now what we need to do is, I'm going to forget about the limit for a, minute, for a while and just focus on this sum. Uh, so this, um, I'm going to do that, simplify as much as I can, and once I have the terms only in terms of n, um, then I'm going to take the limit. Okay, so I know how to write the, the limit in every single step. So, so this sum becomes, um, it's just the sum of i equals 1 up to n. So this is my function f of x, and I'm going to plug xi in there. So you can do two steps, I'm going to write x of x i cubed minus x i, and to buy, to buy that by delta x. And now I'm going to write down who everything is, so let me write that. Uh, so this is uh, i equals 1 up to n, 2 x i over here is just 3 i over n, right? So I'm going to write 2 times 3 i over n quantity cubed minus 3 i over n, and all that multiplied by delta x, which is um, 3 over n. I'm going to write it with a green. Because that delta x, um, 3 over n, is really a constant for terms in terms of the, what the sum cares. The, care, the sum is going over the i, and uh, n is really just the upper bound of this, of this sum. Um, so this, this 3 over n, I can put it in front of the sum. And and write it like this. And then there's going to be the sum of um, 2 times, I have to cube 3i, so it's 27i cubed over n cubed. And then over here I have, I'm going to have the 3, I'm going to write like 3 over ni. Because remember, this is my goal, um, is to have it like, in terms of, identify these as sums of the formulas in the back page, in the past page. So, so this is another constant, right? This term here is another constant for that, for this, for this, uh, what this sum concerns. So it can also take it outside of this, um, of this sum. So I'm going to distribute, uh, I'm going to separate this like two sums. I'm going to keep this three in outside for, for now. And I'm going to break this like two sums. I have the sum of i equals 1 up to n, this becomes a 54 over n cubed of i cubed, and then I have the 3 over n of the sum of the i's. Right? So this is looking a lot better. Okay, I need some space, so let's make this, let's shrink this. Let me put this here on the side. So did all that work right there. 
So now um, I can just, I'm almost ready to apply the formulas. I'm almost done. I'm, I might uh, leave this three over n outside for now. If I zoom too, too much, it looks like that. Uh, and then inside here, I have another, again, this is a constant for this sum, so I'm going to take it out. 54 over n cubed of the sum of i equals 1 up to n of i cubed minus 3 over n of the sum from i equals 1 up to n of i. And now these two sums have uh, the forms I wanted. That's what I meant by you want to be able to write them like these. Once you have that, then you distribute, sorry, you just write the other side of these formulas, right? So kind of like your goal is to, to simplify these, so to identify these sums as one of the ones you can apply. And now we get it at this point, I'm ready to do it. So here I can do um, 54 times 3, I think is 162. I have an n cube. And the i cube uh, sum was the sum of cubes was n times n plus 1 over 2 squared. Oh, a parenthesis is missing right here. So I'm going to write it's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2 quantity squared. And over here, I'm going to have again, so 3n times 3n, I get the 9n squared. Oops. So here, um, I should delete everything. And here, uh, I'm multiplying this 3n times this 3n, right? So I distributed this 3n times that, and now this 3n times that. So I get the 9n squared. And the sum of i's is just n times n plus 1 over 2. That's a formula on the other page that we showed you. OK, so once I get to here, then I'm almost done. Um, I can distribute. Uh, so this is n squared. If you do the algebra here, this is really n squared times n plus n squared plus 2n plus 1 squared, right? So each term of these is squared. So then I get n to the four. It really is n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus n squared. That's what this is, right? So let me write that using the fact that I can do this in my advantage here. And then I have in the denominator, I have a... Um, uh, n to the cubes, sorry, something missing. This should be n to the fourth, right? Uh, I didn't, I didn't combine these two guys together, so it should be really should be. This should be n to the fourth. If not, that would be a problem. And my numbers are once two divided by two. That's an eighty-one over here. And I have a two. Sorry. Oh, sorry. This is not a two. Let me leave it as it is. I have a two squared in the denominator. So let me leave it as it is. I'm going to have 162 and a 4. OK? That's because I, I just let me keep it like that instead of trying to simplify for now. Getting confusing with the, with the it's dividing, and I have the 2 squared, which is a 4. In fact, if I want to keep these together, this, this was right here, right? But I'm just putting it inside here. OK. Oh, so I can do that and just put, only put this 4 over here. And this is how we want it. Okay, now on this side, I have um, n squared plus n, right? Which I can have like a 9 times n squared plus n. And then I can put the 2 over here and leave the n squared over here. So there we go. So this is our last expression that we have for now. So this is the, the value of the sum. Uh, and now, remember that I did this sum. And I haven't found the limit. So now to find the value of the integral, I really need to do uh, the limit when n goes to infinity of this that I just found. Let's put it over here. And it's the limit of this whole thing. And what we're doing now is finding the limit of these rational expressions. And if you remember again from Calc 1, if these have the same power, 
uh, it's going to be a 1. It was the leading coefficient, but I have it factored, so it's just going to be this number over here. And over here is the same. They have the same power, so it's just this limit is 1. So just this number over here is a 9 halves. So my answer for this is just 81 halves minus 9 halves, which is 72 halves, which is sim simplifies nicely to 36. Okay, so that's our answer for this. Oops, sorry. Answer for this problem. A nice 36.